Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later, we're going to be talking about the new special session, maybe for fracking. We'll figure that out soon enough. But first, the new form of reporting. Is it going to stay with us? A couple great reporters from the old well, the Denver Post, the late great. Oh, no, I guess they're still still here. Alan Gottlieb with an organization called Chalkbeat.org. Thank you for joining us. You used to be an education reporter at the Denver Post. Right, many, many moons ago. Right. And Diane Carmen, who wrote terrible things about me for my entire career at RTD. <laughs> you were a columnist at the Denver Post. Yes. All right. And now you run uh, healthnewscolorado.org. Yes. All right. Before we get into your, your ventures, I, I want your take on, on newspapers. You know, we're all getting long in the tooth, so we can, we can reminisce. It was great having a two newspaper town here. And people who come to Denver now have no idea the rich journalistic history that this city had. Would I be right? Absolutely. That's why I came to Colorado. I had worked in the newspaper business in Oregon and in Wisconsin and in Ohio. And when I was contacted about coming to the Denver Post, it was 1988. It was the hottest newspaper war in the country. And I thought it was thrilling and exciting and fun and, and challenging and wonderful. There wasn't a lot of money, but there was sure a lot of excitement. So it was yeah, where the action it was. It was right? where the action was. And, yeah. and you, I mean, even though you fought against the, the the Rocky Mountain News, there was a real professional rivalry. I mean, this this was newspaper men really wanted to beat the other paper. Yeah, and at the same time, it was friendly in its own way. I mean, it wasn't always friendly, but you'd be sitting at a meeting with the other the reporter from the other paper from the Rocky, and you'd be cracking wise and making jokes about the people you were covering and laugh, you know, cracking each other up and it was fun. Those days are gone. And, and, and the Rocky, of course, closed. Uh, and the Post is, can I just say it, it is a shadow of what it used to be. You guys, you guys aren't paid there anymore, so would you agree? This is, this is, it just doesn't have the reporting it used to have. And I, I'm not blaming uh, the resources there. They just don't have the resources. They don't have the people. They don't have the copy checkers. It's not, it's not the same. It's, it's completely different. Um, the uh, the staffing is is much smaller and and weaker. The resources available for things like travel and to break somebody out of the routine and let them go deep in a story, they're just not there. The copy desk is is decimated. You know, it's just a whole different environment. And you know, you can't blame them. They're trying to survive. Right. All right. So let's let's talk about what you guys are doing because it's interesting. Now you did something called uh, Colorado Education. I'm trying to remember. Ed what News it was. Colorado. Ed News Colorado, which is now renamed Chalkbeat. But as an education reporter and somebody who worked in education, you decided that we needed a new source just on education. It used to be that both papers would have beat reporters who did nothing but education work. Now that's what you do. Right. Well, I mean, in the, in 2007, um, I started to notice that even though the Rocky Mountain News at that point was still alive, it was also a shadow of its former self, although still doing really good work. Um, but there just wasn't the kind of coverage there used to be given to education. And I sensed a real opportunity to have a, a website that really went deep on covering education news and dedicated itself to nothing but that and developing the expertise to cover it. And it, it took off. Because that's, that's what papers don't have. They don't have beat reporters who were there the year before, the year before, and the year before, who can see the trends, who know the characters, who can follow that. How is Chalkbeat doing? Chalkbeat's doing really well. I mean, our traffic keeps growing, our influence keeps growing. I hear you have over 20 readers a day now. I that's mean, right. That's it's, incredible. It's, it's amazing. And, some, and only a few of them come back multiple times. Yeah, so it's really, yeah, it's yeah. like 17. But no, yeah. We've got, you know, close to 3,000 readers a day and um, pretty consistently. And we spike on days when there's big news like uh, a release of test scores or an election, uh, our traffic. So people know we're out there. Not everybody in the world wants to read an education news website every day. But then the policymakers and the influencers and the education professionals read us every day obsessively. Now you've done the same thing in healthcare. Now this is this is a partnership with University of Colorado. Help me understand what it is that you do. Well, it's interesting because some of my colleagues at the School of Public Affairs at CU Denver were big fans of then Ed News Colorado. And they asked me if I would be willing to um, launch a similar website. And I contacted a number of people in town and some people from the um, Colorado Health Foundation said that they would be very supportive of a project that would cover health policy because, of course, we've been going through all the debates about 
Obamacare and things like that. So in, um, I believe it was 2010, we launched uh, this website and uh, it's, it's a small operation, one full-time reporter, a half-time editor, that's me, and uh, it's entirely funded by private foundations who very uh, strenuously require that there be editorial independence and and we've had some great success in in impact i think on the debates about education i mean <laughs> healthcare. Mm -hmm. so uh, I'm, I'm noticing something here that as newspapers start contracting and at some point you know go away forever i just don't understand our, our grandkids are not going to cut down trees turning them into paper and put ink on them it's, it's going to be digital are we going to see instead of the Denver Post are we going to see perhaps this is where you go for your education news this is where you go for your health care news this is where you go maybe for your political news this is where you go for your sports news is is that going is that a likely scenario I think I think it may be and the reason I say that is because I've been doing this for long enough now that you know the, the foundation world has a fairly significant influence on the kind of ed of websites that that flourish because they get funded by them it, at first the national funders I'm talking about in particular didn't really get it when we were talking about these single issue niche or as you like to say niche websites um, they really thought you know no we really need to replicate the breadth of a newspaper and so it was really hard for us to gain traction with the national funders in the last couple of years they've suddenly come around to believing that these single issue sites really are the thing to, to fund and support as, as a journalist do you see this as as something that's going to grow or are you guys just anomalies you know, I think it will grow, but I think that landscape will continue to evolve and change. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is kind of a bridge to whatever we can't imagine as the next form of journalism. There's, there's still a struggle to come up with a, a successful business, a viable business model for, for journalism. Um, the old business model, totally advertising dependent, is eroding. And so we have to come up with something else. And the foundations may or may not continue to support this. You, there's no guarantee. Yeah, let's so let's, we'll let's talk about that. I mean, w when the Rocky and the Post were going at it, you made money from subscriptions. You made money from those classified ads, which Craigslist just destroyed. And, of course, uh, Jake Jabs and others putting ads in your paper. And, and it worked, and it was a money maker. Now, a lot of those things are, are completely gone. You have to go to foundations. Foundations are somebody left in their will, a lot of money to go towards education or to health care. I could say that there was an Associated Press style of objective journalism, which I would always argue wasn't there, but there was this goal, this mm -hmm. goal of, of real objective journalism. Now that you guys are slaves to funders and direct funders, how does that affect what you report on. You know, Diane mentioned that the, the, the people who fund her site are, you know, strenuously insist on independence, and it's the same with us. We strenuously insist on independence, and we, we've talked to our funders about how our credibility and their investment isn't going to mean anything if we're seen as having to slavishly adhere to the, whatever beliefs they may have. So we have never been meddled with in the slightest in working on I don't, I, I don't, I don't doubt that, but let's be honest. When funders have a subtle agenda and they fund you sooner or later that subtle agenda has got to come through otherwise they might not they might not fund you again well I've never seen any evidence of that and as an old buddy of mine from the Denver Post said when we were talking about this one time yeah when was the last time the Denver Post wrote a story about the 10 worst car dealers in Colorado <laughs> or even about <laughs> restaurants that uh, that um, fail health inspections I mean, there are a lot of things that that um, the old uh, business model didn't support. And so, in other words, you couldn't go after your advertisers now. Uh, so, if if um, one of the foundations, and, and which foundation? I'm sorry. Well, we have a number of foundations, but the Colorado Health Foundation, the Piton Foundation, caring if, for Colorado. If they were part of the story, would you be able to go after them in your paper? Well, go after is not what we do, but we do report on things. And when the Colorado Health Foundation uh, it, uh it, you know sold its share of right. health one um, we wrote quite a bit about that not all of it was terribly flattering let's talk a little bit about about the circulation when when you have the Denver Post you know you have half a million circulation and maybe readership of a million depending on you know who reads it in the household uh, I, I know you're big you're not that big right you know and even the online presence of the post is still 
you know, an 800 pound gorilla online, even though it doesn't generate a whole lot of revenue for them, you know, they always say, we're generating twice as much as we did last year. And I, yeah, okay, that's great. Um, but your, your readership is really narrow, but very, very deep, isn't it? It's narrow and deep, and I think another thing is that you can't measure your influence in this world solely by the number of visits to your website. I mean, we've now that we're a national network and we have some national staff, one of the things we work on is what we call engagement, and part of that is, di is distribution strategy. So we don't care as much about whether people come to our website in droves as that they see what we're producing in large numbers. So we are happy to distribute and let people use our stuff anywhere they want, pick it up, run with it because we want people reading the content we produce more than we want them coming to our website. So unlike the Denver Post, which had some fights with some other uh, uh, websites that would grab their content right. and almost repeat it, you're like, here, take it. Go, go use what we've written. We have a button on our site the way some of the other big national uh, organizations like ProPublica have, which basically says, you know, clip this and take it and put it on your site whole hog, just take it. Do you want attribution um, for that? Saying yeah, we do want right. attribution and a link back to our site so people know where it comes from, but we care more about people reading it. We believe that it's the information that we're imparting that's important. That's part of, that's part of the new model as well. It, it is, and, and the other aspect of this that is really important is you started this conversation by talking about the disappearance of the Rocky Mountain News right. and the impact on journalism in this town. One of the things that happens with our niche websites is that we needle the post a little bit. When we cover things that they miss, they notice it. Mm -hmm. And, they, and, and it, it makes a difference. We are able to have an impact on the larger conversation just by being there and covering it. Whether we have 6,000 hits to a story or 15,000 hits to a story or 600 hits to a story, the right hits are, are what's important to us, and, and it, it has a huge impact. When those hits come from a policymaker, an elected official, somebody who's in the budget office looking at this, or somebody who's in the auditor's office going, I didn't know that happened at that school district or whatever, and mm -hmm. it's time to look into it. So that role is, is, is still happening. What's the future look like for both of you? We've got less than a minute left. What? I think the future looks like, in terms of chalkbeat, that we're going to wind up, you know, we're in, we're in four places now, we're going to be in a dozen or 20, 10 years from now um, is the goal, and that alone is going to create economies of scale and sustainability for us. Yeah, but you miss the newsroom, don't you? Oh, yeah, Guys, we have a newsroom, we have a newsroom. You should, it's over at uh, yeah. a competitor of yours, so I won't mention its name, but <laughs> it's great. I mean, we've got people, it's fun, it feels competitor like Competitor of mine, thus the ideological uh, impact. So, The future it look like? of Health News Colorado? I'm not exactly sure. The university is very proud of this and supportive of us, um, but we are entirely dependent on foundations, and we hope that they're proud of us and c continue to support us. Diane, thank you. Alan, thank you. You stay tuned.